Well, we got my buck back to camp. I, I've been wanting to share something with y'all, and I want to try to do something like this on every episode. Being a, a hunting guide, a taxidermist, meat processor, outfitter, all the things I've done over the last 30 or so years, I just, I just kind of feel obligated to, to share everything I can, you know, to help other people out. And we're talking about a, having a good mount. Well, you got to have a good quality taxidermist to get a good mount, obviously. But it actually starts with you, right here. As soon as that animal's down, it starts with you. So, if you want to have a good quality mount, I'm going to show you a few things you can do and some tricks to make sure that you get that done. So, a little cheap tape for like uh, seamstress. You can get it at Walmart in the sewing section, two bucks or something. What you want to do, I'm around the back side, it's a little awkward, but you're going to come right in the corner of that tear duct, right there, where the eyeball is. And you're going to go straight to the end of the nose. That deer is seven and a quarter inches. Now, the next measurement you want to do, you're going to catch him right behind the neck, or behind the head and the ears. And don't pull it up real snug. Just let it kind of go limp there. Try to pull it around where y'all can see it. It's 18 inches right now. I can pull it just a little bit. So we're going to go with 18 inches. So it's seven and a quarter by 18 inches. Those are the measurements you need to give your taxidermy. And you can do, if you want exact proper horn placement, like he was when he was alive, you measure from the tip of each main beam to the nose. He is 15 inches to the tip of his nose. And you do the same thing on the other side. And you just write all that down. Now here's another thing. This, this is a myth. You do not have to be a taxidermist. And all you taxidermists out there are probably going to hate me for this, but you do not have to be a taxidermist to order from the taxidermy supply company. You do not have to be a taxidermist to send your own hides to the tannery. They don't care if you're a taxidermist. They're in the tanning business. And the supply company don't care if you're a taxidermist. They're in the selling supply business. So you don't have to be a taxidermist. Don't let anybody tell you that. So what I do, this is a number 22 blade and a scalpel nice. handle. I get 100 of these blades for like 28 bucks, something like that. Man, they last a long time. And I keep this steel in my back pocket. It's a diamond steel. It starts to get a little dull. I just do this with it. And the blades are sterile in here. So, and the other thing you can order from the supply company, a little windy out here, are these waterproof tags. And you just write all your information on them with a magic marker, black fine tip magic marker, works real well. And you zip tie it on the horn, somewhere in between that, the, the points. And then when you roll the cape up, you put it in a bag. I go, you can get ice bags when you buy ice, you can keep them, they work real well. Uh, they got these ice machines now, everybody wants to dump their ice in the cooler and stick the bag over the little post. Well, I, I gather those bags up because I use a lot of them and they're brand new bags, so no biggie. So you roll your cape up and then you stick this down in it and with your name on it, on, on each one. So when you get to the taxidermist, that's already done. He's already got the measurement. Now, here is a real important thing you need to know. People want to cut the deer all the way up the neck. You don't want to do that, man. Right here is your stopping point. Right there at the center of that brisket, just above the top of the breastbone. Usually you can see where the color starts. You want to come down this line. You can cut it around the legs right here at this joint. Cut it all the way down that center, all the way to the armpit. Then you just V it over to here on both sides. Then you get a full brisket, the full armpits, and you get a great shoulder mount. It don't matter what position you want it in, you've left enough cake for your taxidermy. Now I make those incisions, and then I make my incisions back here. And I hang the deer, let him down the middle to this point, and then when I skin him, I just skin him all the way to here. Don't leave a bunch of meat in the neck. It makes it hard on your taxidermist. And he got to cut the further down the cape, and there's more sewing. And the more you got to do, the less, the more odds are of something showing that you don't want nobody to see. So when you get him skint, roll him all the way up to here, and cut the neck and the bone out. Then you spread the hide out, and you lay the legs out, which is just the skin where the legs used to be. And you want to come right about here, about four inches above this area right here. So you want to cut that off. And you can do what you want to with this, but you leave the taxidermist more than he needs, and he can trim what he likes. So, and the other thing is, I'm not going to do this because they frown on this crap on TV for some reason. It's part of it. When you use your knife, your scalpel, you don't want to cut it like this. 
especially down the back of the neck when you're caping it out. Because when you do that, you're cutting the hair. And then when you sew it back together, it's really noticeable. It's hard to hide that. So what you want to do, you want to insert your knife underneath it and cut it this way. And it pushes the hair out of the way when you do that. It's like unzipping a zipper. And then when they sew it up, it's like zipping it back. You can just put the hair right back over it and you'll never see it. So we're going to get this deer dressed out. And when I get everything ready, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to cape the head out. All right, y'all, we're back. As you can see, I've got him skin out like I instructed earlier. Here is the brisket. Right here. Got our blood trail dogs over there barking in the background. And this will be your front legs. And this, for lack of a better way to put it, is like an armpit area. So you want to come back here about 10 inches or so, somewhere in there, and just cut the whole cape off. Discard this or have it tanned, whatever you want to do. And this is more than your taxidermist is going to need. Unless you're doing like a wall pedestal or a pedestal mount, you want to roll the hair over the back. You might want to cut it back another four or five inches. So that's a good tip. The other thing is, when you before you ever start caping this deer out, you want to start here. I don't know how much of this they're going to show on TV. We ain't got no blood. We'll clean them all up. But you want to take your knife. Y'all hush over there, dog. You want to take your knife, and you want to cut him. I'm not going to cut him, but cut him right here where the top of the gum line meets the bone and cut it all the way around. And then you want to come down here around the back side of the deer. See how I cut it off, everything there? I have to make a very short incision here. Now if your taxidermist needs to cut it a little bit further back, then he or she can do that. So here's what you do. You can see like a natural V almost. You can see it right there. Remember what I told you about turning that blade upside down? You don't matter if you go this way, if you go this way, whichever way works best for you. But you want to cut it from the back of the ball of the skull at an angle, straight up to the back side, roughly the center of the butt of the horn on either side. And then you can cut it, remember cut underneath now, and you can see that dark stripe down the back of the deer's neck. All deer have that pretty much. And you just, you just come down there about four inches or so just to give you enough to turn the head. And when you peel it out, be real careful skinning around the burrs and the tear duct. That's another very important thing. These tear ducts are deep. So when you pull that up from the inside, always keep your blade against the bone underneath it, skin from underneath. Piece of cake. You get all that done right, you tax the dummers to have a great cape to work with, and you'll get a better mount. I hope you all enjoyed the tip, and I hope you learned something useful.